love. You so you can call God love. There's only love, and that is the only the only reality there is. And when we go with that love, which is the totality of being, then love will take care of us. But when we when we do not want to learn, when we close off, we're not doing anything wrong, but it's just that we have to suffer the consequences of that. Because you can never do anything wrong. We're either ignorant or we're seeing. That's all. If we're ignorant, we seem to suffer. But you're never doing anything wrong. You're doing what you're doing because that's all you know. You see? So, but when you become more aware, when you begin to see that everything is dictated by love and move with that love, then, then everything seems to come your way. You need something, it's there, you... Yeah. So the karma, <coughs> when yeah. you're not following your dharma? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could put it that way. If you're doing, for example, we were, I was, I was t talking to Sivya, I said, um, you know, there's so many people that don't enjoy their work. You know, like, like you see a mailman sometimes complaining, you know, have a nice day. Oh, you know. <laughs> See, what do you mean nice day to you, maybe? <laughs> you know, so uh, there, there are people who don't enjoy their work. Now, that to me is very sad. Because um, the work that you do is, is, is part of your expression, is, is part of what you're giving. And love is a giving, you know, service, you see? So when you're not enjoying yourself in whatever you're doing, you don't give. When you don't give, there's no service. Right, when there's, you're resisting it. You're resisting, you're resisting it, it, right? The Dharma, and that brings you the a exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> we can put it that way. Karma is separation. Karma is separation. It's a, it's a, yeah. It's a, it's a, but it's a consequence of whatever you think and feel. You see? It's a result of thinking. Yeah. A result of thinking. Whereas Dharma is thinking or not thinking, it just is. Just is. You don't, you don't own it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very good. Yes, yeah. Dharma, Dharma is. Yeah. You can go against Dharma through unawareness, you see? You could be doing something and then you just, I don't like where I am. Well, hell, you are there. <laughs> you know, the point is that, you know, Life is putting you there to do what you do because that's that's your dharma. You know, I don't know what other English word equivalent to it. So acceptance so, is crucial. Absolutely crucial. Thank you. Uh, acceptance is absolutely crucial. Definitely. Whatever situation you find yourself in, you either accept it or you resist it. Resistance is always suffering. Always. And, of course, uh, not only suffering, but it brings dire consequences more and more and more, and it begins to accumulate, like compounded interest in the bank, you see? Yeah. There's no end to it. It's a vicious circle until you stop and say, I'm going to look at this. See? Life is not good or bad, because what we call good is very limited and it's social dualistic to bad. Life is you see, and we've been given this gift to realize that isness, and that isness is, is um, the mind can't conceive. It has no comparison. It has no. You know. Um, is is you said something? I get hung up on the. You're not supposed to say that you're right, but isn't if you're right, like a better perception, like a more accurate awareness when you're expressing? something and you know you know you're right but if you say you're right you said that then you're separating but absolutely you, 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 if you say you are right immediately you've lost the knowing because knowing does not know right or wrong knowing is you see for example you see somebody who's who's arguing with you mm -hmm. okay let's say you know and uh, they're they're convinced that they are right well, somehow in you, you know, without a fact, you know that you are right. right. But if you fight it, yeah. if you fight with it and you say, no, 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 I am right, okay? You've lost that accuracy of that knowing. But if you really know down deep inside that, that, that of course, this is silly, right? You stop. You automatically stop. 
you stop arguing. When you know there is no need to prove anything. But what if the person needs to hear something to make them... That's prepared? not up to you. When you go into your knowing and your love, it automatically comes out of you because the love takes over. You're still thinking in terms of me doing it. You see, and, and, um, and this, is, this is good, and I'm glad you're asking these questions, because all the time we say, well, maybe we have to do this, maybe I should do this, maybe... There are no shoulds in life, okay? All you have to remember is that love has to do it, my being, okay? I, I keep surrendering to that which I am, and that takes over. And then you find yourself doing things spontaneously that are perfect. You don't even know you are doing them until after you've done them. This must have happened to us quite often. You see? Like somebody told me one time, they said, uh, I'm doing um, uh, work with hospice work, right? With, with the dying. And uh, someone said, asked me, he says, well, what, what should I say? What should I do? You know, like when I'm, when I'm with them, I get tongue-tied and all that. You see? And the question arises because you're thinking of you. But reverse it. That person who is dying is in an extension of you. And if there is love, the thought of what you should say, what you should do, uh, is redundant. Does not enter. And you might not say anything. Your silence will show through your eyes and, will, and give, give strength to that person. You see? So what I'm saying is, Whenever we raise a personal question, what I should do, what I shouldn't do, whether it's right or whether it's wrong, this is all the, the, the personal still wanting to be in control, you see? And when you keep yourself quiet and let, let the spirit work through you. So all the time, whenever you're not sure of anything, because the human is always asking questions, and questions have to be asked, because that's, the, that's what growth is, you see? until qu all questions stop. When all questions stop, you're in being. Because being has no questions, being is. So, um, whenever you have any questions, you know, what am I really asking? Who is asking this? Why is it important? Go into these, explore them, and then you find that something in you already knows, you see? And let that knowing keep growing inside you until it takes over. And then you'll find eventually it will begin to take over. Is it because you don't have any more questions it takes over and you just, you're giving, no. you're surrendering? You're you're, 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 when you surrender, the, <laughs> the questions become um, not that important anymore, you see? But, but you cannot pretend that they're not important because a question will eat you up. Mm. You see, what, okay, some people say, uh, I got depressed for no reason at all. I feel I suffered anxiety, or I felt so tense, or I started to cry for no reason, or I got up in the morning feeling terrible. You know what these are? Questions that are not asked. What is wrong with me? Why am I suffering this? this what's, what's, what's happening? See these questions? These are questions that haven't been asked. So when you ask them to yourself and understand them, and who's asking this question, you'll find that you begin to burn these questions. <clears throat> and incidentally, there's a, there's a booklet on the table, and I gave it a glossy cover, because I, I would like everybody to have a copy. It's called The Inner Light Beckons. Please take one when you leave. Oh, and, and another thing, too. Everything that's on the table is free except the box. Okay? So take whatever you want. Okay. Um, so where were we? Yeah, so whenever you let love Whenever you have any questions or any fear or anything at all, just stop for a moment and find out what is this ego wanting, this human part of me? What is it that is asking? What is it that it wants? And then you'll find that whatever it wants is already in being. It's not out there. To stop and doing that. And, and this is how the questions will, will start to uh, burn out. But you cannot pretend you have no questions. If there is unhappiness in you, if there is sadness in you, if there is any negativity in you at any moment, it means there are questions that are not being answered in you. You see? 